Hi class and welcome to part two of problem solving and programming. Today I'll be your presenter, Ms. Anderson. What did we do in our last session on problem solving? We learned to define what was a problem and we said that for every problem we have solutions. But to get from a problem to a solution we said that we go through a series of steps called problem solving. We listed the steps in problem solving and we were able to create what is called an IPO chart. And these IPO charts breaks down the problem so we can see what will be our outcome. What are our objectives for this class? We want to be able to describe the top-down problem solving method. We want, to be, we want to be able to distinguish between variables and constants. And we want to be able to use appropriate data types. Now, what is the top-down and stepwise refinement problem-solving method? Now, the top-down and stepwise are very similar. This top-down method analyzes a problem and breaks it down into smaller problems, or what we refer to as sub-problems. Each sub-problem is then solved. All the solutions are then combined to then solve the original problem. Now, stepwise refinement is just a more precise way to do the top-down design. This breaks down a problem into smaller problems, and those smaller problems are broken even are broken down into even smaller problems. All right. Now, let's look at an example of using the top-down method. We're gonna look at how do we make pancakes. Starting from the top, what's our task? Our task is that we want to make some pancakes. But saying that by itself isn't enough to actually make pancakes. We need to break this task down. And by breaking it down, we're using the top-down approach. How do you make some pancakes? Firstly, you need to organize the kitchen. You then make your pancakes and then you serve them. Now, each of these tasks can be broken down even further. First, you need to organize your kitchen. You may clean the surfaces, get out the mixing bowl, whisk, spoon, and sieve. You may get out plain flour, salt, eggs, milk, butter, and then you put on your apron. After that, after you finish cleaning the, the, the kitchen, you then can make your pancakes. You need to sift salt flour into bowl, break eggs into bowl, whisk them together, add water and milk, add butter, whisk and then you cook them and finally you can serve your pancakes notice that we're able to take each task and break them down now even these tasks can be broken down further let's look at the cook the cook needs to get the pan to a temperature they need to pour the butter in they need to spread the butter to the edges they need to use a plastic spatula to check the bottom of the pancake. When brown, flip the pancakes. Use plastic spatula to check bottom of the pancake. And when brown, finish. And even some of these tasks we can break down even further. So starting at a single point, the creation of a pancake, we have broken down the task into individual parts. And this is what we refer to as using the top down and stepwise refinement methods. Now, what are we going to get into next? We have some terms that we need to identify. We need to identify what are constants versus what are variables. And we also have five data types that we want to pay attention to. Now, what are constants and what are variables? We know what a computer is. A computer is a machine that processes and accepts data in digital format and then outputs results. Data and program instructions we should know from our earlier lessons in your first and second form classes are stored in what is called the main memory, also known as RAM, random access memory. Now these programs use what are called variables and constants as containers. And these containers are storage space within your computer for storing the data in RAM. Now, whenever you're using these containers, you must provide them with the following information. First, 
you need to indicate as to whether the container will store a value that will be fixed. And fixed values means values that will not change will be called constants. Now, values that will change are called variables. Sounds like we're going back to math, right? Now, aside from stating whether it's going to be fixed or, or will change, constant or variable, you also need to provide a name and you need to provide a data type. Now, what are constants? Like the name says, it remains the same, all right? It is a name location in memory whose value will remain the same during your program execution. The constant is a data that is known value and keeps the value and does not depend on what other factors. Before a constant can be used in a program, it must be declared. To declare a constant, a programmer must provide what is called an identifier, which is, of course, a name and a value. So you're going to give it a name and you're going to give it a value. There is no need to provide a data type for constants. The program translator will automatically determine the data type. For example, the name that we're going to give it is tax. The value will be equal to 0.12. So throughout this program, tax will always be 0.12. Now variables, on the other hand, is another location in memory whose contents will, of course, change. A variable can change their value throughout a program or do not have a known fixed value. Variables are needed for storing, for example, all data that will be provided by the user, a computation that takes place during the process. That means an answer that you're going to get after solving a problem. Before a variable can be used in a program, it must be declared similarly like a constant. A declared, to declare a variable, the programmer must provide these things. Again, you must have an identifier, which will be the name. And in this type, you must provide what will be the data type. Notice for constants, the data type was determined by the computer execution. However, using a variable, the data type must be declared. For example, what is the name of the identifier? The identifier's name is first name. And what data type will first name use? It will be used using what is called a string data type. That takes us then into what are the different data types. You have, for example, integers, real, string, character, or boolean. Now, let's look at each data type one by one. We have the first one called integers, and of course, this will take you back to math again. Integers are whole numbers, so they cannot have decimal points and cannot represent fractions. Integers can be of any length. It is only limited by the memory that is available on your computer. For example, you have the number 10, negative 6, 98, negative 34, and 0. These are all examples of integers because they're whole numbers and do not have any decimal places or fractions. Another data type is called a real, and a real sometimes is referred to as being a float number. These are numbers that include decimal points. They are sometimes called floating point numbers and can also be negative. A floating point number is accurate up to 15 decimal places. Again, you can have numbers like 3.25, negative 1.8, 98.3, or negative 107.4. Five, three. These are all of these numbers, they carry decimal places and they can also be negative. What are our objectives for this class? We want to be able to describe the top-down problem solving method. We want, to be, we want to be able to distinguish between variables and constants and we want to be able to use appropriate data types. Another data type is called a string. Now, a string is a sequence of Unicode characters. A string can be any number of characters. 
we can use single quotes or double quotes to represent your strings. Multi-line strings can be denoted using triple quotes. For example, notice so that I can place the word John is not a character, it's a string of characters. I place this string of characters in double quotes. Again, you can also use single quotes. Another example, the boy is tall, using the exclamation point. Again, I place this in double quotes, quotes because it is a string of characters. Now, the final example is called a Boolean. And the Boolean takes me back to my database. This will only have two possible values. It can either be true or false, or it can be yes or no. No, there is no maybe. That takes us then into what are the different data types. You have, for example, integers, real, string, character, or boolean. Thank you for your attention in this problem solving and program design video. I hope that you learned something new and please look out this week that I will be posting a quiz on Thursday, which will be tomorrow, that will include contents of last week, looking at the IPO chart, what was the problem, what was the solution, what's problem solving, and also looking at content from this week. Have a great week, guys.